The following podcast includes a depiction of violence which may be distressing to some listeners. In the far reaches of the north, upon a canvas of cold, star-filled sky, a symphony of color and cosmic radiation plays through the winter night. It is beautiful and terrifying, silent and cacophonous, colorful and Bible Black. It is the Northern Lights, mankind's oldest unsolved mystery. If you listen to them very, very carefully, you can hear the millions of voices trapped within. This is Frozen Frights. Aurora Borealis. Mr. Peterson? Mr. Peterson. What? There's no smoking in here. Oh, yeah? That is correct. We have told you that more than once. We have told you there is no smoking. Yeah. You are the most fascinating case we have studied. Did you know that? Oh, thanks. I think you're real nice, too. You are being sarcastic. Yep. Why are you being difficult? Don't think I am. So can I go now? You are not being detained. Sure seems like I am. We are not here to detain you. We are here to ascertain the situation. The situation fascinates us. But I can go. You are not being detained. See ya, dummy. What is this? What is what? What do you got here? Some kind of fun house or something? I don't understand. Oh, you don't, huh? Well, I leave that door over there. I come right in through that one. Is that a problem? I can't leave. Of course it's a problem. You did leave. Then you came back. Smart Alec. As you can see, you are not being detained. You are free to move about as much as you wish. Think you're pretty damn smart, don't you? I am here to ascertain the situation. The very definition of that task suggests we lack knowledge we require. What? What knowledge? Who are you people? What the hell am I doing here? What's this all about? Murder. What did you say? You asked me what it is all about. It's about murder. The murder you committed. I don't know what you're talking about. We are here to ascertain the situation. Well, you can't prove anything. It's all just hearsay and slander. You know, I'll sue you, you son of a bitch. We do not wish to ascertain the situation pertaining to the murder right away. We wish to understand the background first. Background? Yes. The circumstances behind it all. We wish to understand. We wish to ascertain the situation. The whole situation. What the hell you talking about? We thought you might want to take advantage of your opportunity. Well, I don't. 
opportunity for what? To set us straight. Huh? We don't understand the situation. We thought you might want to set us straight, just as you have many of your friends and neighbors, even strangers you meet in town. You set people straight all the time, do you not? You kidding me? You fancy yourself quite the expert. I don't much like your tone, mister. Why? I'm complimenting you. <laughs> complimenting me. You don't believe me. Smart boys like you don't compliment people like me. They don't come around to decent people and ask to be set straight. And yet, in this situation, that is exactly what I am doing. Well, I don't believe you. It is true. Why should I believe that? Because I am here to ascertain the situation. And we do not understand the situation. Your situation. My situation, huh? You don't get it? No. Well, I'll tell you about my situation. Sick and tired. That's my situation. Sick and tired of what? All of it. Everything. Sick and tired of being one of the very few that can see through the bullcrap of what's going on. They feed us lies all day, every day. People just slop it up like prize hogs. Who is feeding you lies? Well, the media, of course. Haven't you been paying attention? Politicians have the media in their pocket, and they beam their signals into our brains, and the people just lap it up because it's what they want to hear. And then, when a decent man gets himself elected president, they won't leave him alone. Just attack him 24 hours a day, take apart every little thing he says, and they twist it and they turn it around until... Until what? Well, until he sounds like an idiot. Do you think he's an idiot? You think a man gets to be president by being an idiot? You're awfully quiet all of a sudden. Didn't expect to hear this, I bet. I will admit, I did not. Well, that's because you probably never met a decent man before. A man who'll tell you the truth. Tell me the truth. About what? You are allowing me to select the topic? Sure, why not? Very well. Tell me the truth of the pandemic. <laughs> yes? Pandemic. Yes, you lived through it. What I lived through was the spring of 2020. I don't know about any pandemic. You doubt there was one? I just think it's awfully convenient that right about the time President Trump's approval rating's going through the roof, a mysterious pandemic hits. You do not think there was one? Oh, yeah, some people got sick, sure. But all the rest of it? Shutting down the restaurants, shutting down sports. Jesus, they canceled March Madness. You know how much money that cost? You know how many people lost their jobs? No. Do you? A lot. That's how many. Did you? Did I what? Did you lose your job? You trying to be funny? I am trying to ascertain the situation. Sure you are. Sure. Did you lose your job? No. You did not? That's what I just said. I'm on... disability. Military. Come again. Is everything okay, Sergeant? Hold on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I understand, sir. No, sir. The unit had to... Well, I know protocol says we don't split up, but the Taliban's figured that out, sir. We, we show up in the village. They scatter to the winds. Uh, are we in trouble? Shh. Yes, sir. Copy that. I understand. What's wrong? Oh, it's hit the fan. Come on. Where are we going? Back to the rally point. Come on. Yes, sir. And for the last time, Pete, I'm not an officer. I work for a living. You address me as sergeant, not sir. Yes, sergeant. Take point. Yes, sergeant. And for God's sake, quit pouting. You're a United States soldier engaging the enemy in hostile territory. Don't mope around like a damn schoolboy's been turned down for the prom. Yes, Sergeant. I'm just... Right. I'm trying real hard, Sergeant. <sighs> it's not a spelling bee, Pete. 
Just survive your deployment and you've done your job. Right. You know, it's weird. Some of this territory kind of reminds me of... I'm fine. Was it a dream? Of course not. I I was just reading something and it... Uh, I got upset, I guess. Upset? Yeah. Can you believe the stuff they let them print now? What's this? What do you mean? Pretty obvious what I mean. These pills. What about them? Have you been taking them? Of course. Not that they do any damn good. I filled this two weeks ago. The bottle looks the same. You're not taking them, are you? I take them when I need them. Dad, you cannot do this. The therapy doesn't work if you don't follow the instructions. I'm fine. Bullshit. Language! You just woke up with another nightmare. Oh, you're living inside my head now. No, but it's a small house, Dad. I heard you scream the name Pete. That was the name of that kid that got killed in Afghanistan, wasn't it? I asked the doctor not to tell you anything about that. Yeah, well, I can be persistent. <laughs> It was Pete, wasn't it? The kid? You were rejoining the rest of your squad when he stepped on a mine? Jesus, did they give you the whole damn report to read? Yes. What? Fine, no, but they gave me enough. Dad, you have to take your therapy for this or you're never going to get better. Ah, jeez, you just like your mother. Exaggerate everything, scared out of your own damn shadow. Don't change the subject. Drama, that's what it is. You can't resist a little drama. Your mother was the same way. She couldn't resist the chance to sink her teeth into some juicy gossip. (laughs) I don't think your PTSD qualifies as gossip. I do not have PTSD. Docs are trigger happy with that stuff. You come in with a hangnail, they'll call it PTSD now. Dad. Whole world's been pussified. Any little thing goes wrong, we have to make a big to-do about it. Used to be we'd get on with things. Go in, finish the job, get paid. That was it. Dad, you've got to take your therapy seriously or it's going to be more nightmares and more sleepless nights. And you can't afford to be sick right now. If you needed a hospital, there wouldn't be a bed for you. The virus has them full up. That's another thing. This virus everyone's on about. What the hell's so scary about the flu? It's not the flu. People die the flu every year. It's a shame, but it's a fact. Why this big mess... Yeah, I'll tell you why. Because people sit on their butts all day, they're too lazy to do work so they feel like crap, so they spend their time dreaming up reasons to feel like crap. You have to take this seriously. I am taking it seriously. I take the destruction of my country from the inside very seriously, Lena. Dad. I'm I'm going down the Busy Bee. The Busy Bee's closed. Well, I'll go to the tap then. Could use something stronger than coffee anyway. It's closed too. Everything's closed by order of the governor, remember? You spent a good hour haranguing that decision last night. I I just gotta get out of here. You wanna go for a walk? <laughs> well, go out back. Some air will do you good. I'll, I'll call Dave. He'd open up the tap for me. He's a friend. He's not gonna open the bar for one customer. Well, we'll open her up. Word will get around town. Dave will be the only bar open and he'll make a mint. He can't open his bar because the governor ordered them all shut down. Just a couple weeks, we gotta keep this thing from spreading, and that will keep people from dying, especially your friends who are all in the at-risk group, not to mention you. My friends are a hell of a lot tougher than you think. Fine, go. But I'm not driving you. You can walk. Jeez, Lena, it's, it's two miles. Exercise will do you good. Go. Turning into quite the little witch, aren't you? With a capital B, I might add. Daughters, what the hell's the point of them? Where are you going? Thought I'd work on the barbecue for a little while, since I'm trapped here. What was your reasoning? What? Your reasoning for disagreeing with the official orders to remain sheltered in place. Didn't agree with them. But you were a soldier. So? You worked under authority. You understand authority. I'm out of the army now. I don't need to take another order ever again if I don't want to. Is that why you do not take the medication? 
don't need those pills. Do you have dreams? Everyone has dreams. Do you experience trauma? Oh, not so much. I need to take those damn pills. But I do not understand. Why not take the pills? What do you have to gain for avoiding them? I can take the damn pills or not. It's up to me. But what do you have to gain? Well, if you can't see it, I'm not going to waste my time explaining things to you. I do not understand. Uh Uh-huh. Do you feel good without them? Your mental and physical condition is adequate? Sure. There is another aspect we wish to ascertain. Whatever. I don't care. It is the situation with your community. Specifically the virus which afflicted it. Don't know anything about that. I am thinking specifically about how it affected you and your relationships. Told you. Don't know anything about it. That is not how you acted. Oh! Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You had a conversation with an associate. Hello, Bob. It's Roy. Well, well, how you holding up? Well, fair to Midland. You? Oh, we're all right. I can't complain. Nope, sure can't. Say, I was thinking about going down to the Busy Bee. Want to join me? Well, uh, gee, Roy, I'd sure like to, but, you know, I think it's closed. Nah, nah. It's open? Should be. It's a Tuesday afternoon. Well, yeah, but I thought the governor closed all the restaurants. Well, I didn't vote for him, so I figure all's fair. Roy? I'll get Lena and pick you up in ten. You be out in the alley, okay? Roy, hold up a second. Are you okay? Well, what do you mean? Well, this all that's going on, you're acting like it doesn't affect you. It's a pandemic. It's affecting everybody. You know, if you don't want to go to coffee, just say so. I worry about you, buddy, okay? I mean... You can't just laugh this one off. This is serious business. You're right, it is serious business. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear it. It's serious business when a good man like you gets brainwashed by so little. Hey, now. No, 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 you just stay home. Shelter in place. Maybe we'll get you a blankie and a pacifier and you'll be all set. Well, there's no reason to take that attitude. Well, I'm just talking about going to coffee. Well, you go ahead. See what it gets you. Go down to the Busy Bee and knock all night. Why don't you lick the damn doorknob while you're there? Do us all a favor. What's that supposed to mean? I'm I'm sorry, Roy. That was over the line. What did you mean, do us all a favor? I'm just gonna go, alright? What'd you mean by that? Take care of yourself, Roy. Bob? Bob! Why? Why what? Why did you anger your best friend? Oh, I didn't anger him. He angered me. But why? It makes no sense. You knew the coffee shop was closed. Well, we didn't know that for sure. Yes, you did. There had been an announcement. You had been by the building already. There was a sign on the door. Well, you don't know till you try, do you? Would have gotten us out of the house anyway. But you were arguing with your friend. It caused a rift between the two of you. Oh, if there was a rift, his fault, not mine. A puzzle. What? You are a puzzle. You claim that the pandemic does not exist despite all evidence. I'm entitled to my opinion. Opinions are irrelevant. The pandemic either exists or does not exist. All I'm saying is, you don't need to slurp up what the media's dishing out. It's a choice. But the cost of ignoring warnings, sickness, death, spreading disease to people you associate with. Which would be a pretty big deal if the media weren't such a pack of liars. But the price of being wrong was too much... Let me make one thing clear to you. I'll tell you when I'm wrong, understand? I'll tell you when I'm wrong. No. What? You asked if we understand. We do not. We do not ascertain this situation. Well, whose fault is that? We come to the crux. What's that? We come to the crux of the situation. I don't know what you're talking about. 
I'm talking about Leo. Roy? Roy? Hmm? Over here. What? Oh, it's you. Uh, don't come any closer. Wasn't planning on it. Oh, good, good. Hey, I thought you were supposed to be in Florida for another two weeks. Well, that was the plan, originally. Uh, thanks for watching the house over the winter. Huh. A real neighborly of you. Well, that's what neighbors are for, Leo. I imagine you forgot that. Well, yeah, well... That was kind of what I wanted to talk to you about. Do you have a minute? You speak up there. I say, do you have a minute to talk? There's something I have to tell you. Go ahead. Uh, can you come a little closer? We can be six feet apart, you know. <sighs> All right, I'm here. What is it? Well, um... Well, that is... Uh... Could you spit it out, please? Need to get back to that barbecue. We're losing daylight. Oh, well, maybe we can talk later, then. No, no, you got me out of my chair, Leo. Now, what is it? It's, uh... It's about this virus that's going around. Yeah, I know. What about the horrible killer flu? Well, I need to... That is, to be a responsible neighbor, I feel I have to... I've got it. What did you say? Now, don't come any closer. What did you just say? Did you... Did you say you had it? I was tested down in Orlando. Tested? You mean for the coronavirus? Yes. I was exposed on a day cruise, and I have a neighbor whose daughter's a doctor. Things weren't so busy yet, so she got me a test right away. You were supposed to stay there. The governor, everyone said you were supposed to stay there. I know. What the hell's wrong with you? I know, I'm sorry. It's just... We live in the pretty tight quarters there in the trailer park, and I have more room up here. You were supposed to stay there, Leo. I didn't want to make everyone sick. We all kind of pal around together down there, but up here, we sort of keep our distance, naturally. Oh, naturally. Besides, spring break hit, and the young people came, and they wouldn't listen to anyone, so they crowded up the beaches, and I just... I wanted to come home. Jesus... You didn't fly, did you? No, of course not. I drove my summer car all the way. It didn't hardly stop either, just drive throughs for food, and I'd only do self-serve gas, and I had disinfectant wipes, wiped down the pump handle every time. You were supposed to stay there. That's what they all said. Shelter in place, especially down there in Florida. Well, what's done is done. And I've reported to the county health department here. They've scolded me too. Good. So, are you sick? No, and it's been nearly two weeks. I could be asymptomatic. Spreading germs without getting sick yourself. You would find a way to do the plague in the most selfish way possible. Roy, I I'm really sorry. But I thought you had to know. Yeah, well, that's, that's something, I suppose. Oh, thank you for understanding. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, you just stay on your side of the fence and we'll be fine. Oh, and make it four weeks, not two, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. About that. What? I was, uh... Well, I can see why you'd be mad about this. What is it, Leo? I just, uh... There's hardly any food in the house. Uh, I've been gone all winter, and I don't want to go to the store because of the... Maybe you'd better just tell me exactly what it is you're talking about. Nerve of that guy. What? What is it? Selfish, rotten little... Dad! That, that, that Leo next door. Can you believe him? What are you talking about? What's wrong? Leo. It's our neighbor. Selfish little, limp-wristed, I don't... Dad, stop. Tell me what happened. Leo is back from Florida. I thought he wasn't coming back for two weeks. Oh, he came back all right. Brought us all a little present, too. He's got it. What? The virus? Yep. Admitted it to me right up front. 
Seemed pretty damn proud of himself, too. Is he sick? Well, no, I just told you he has the virus. Yeah, but is he showing symptoms? Remember, you can carry this thing a long time before you get sick. Ah, I said he felt fine. That's just like him, too. Huh. Did he say why he came back? Because he felt like it, of course. Always thought of himself first, just like everyone else around here. No, Dad. Why did he say he came back? Did he tell you? I I don't know. That Something about the people down there being too close that he could isolate himself better up here. You ever heard such nonsense? Well, actually, that makes a lot of sense. What? It makes a lot of sense. He has that whole house to himself, and there aren't nearly as many people here. He can keep himself isolated. Do you hear yourself? That man broke the law. Governor ordered everyone in Florida to stay put, and he busted out. Spread the damn plague across half the country while he drove north, too. Dad. Half a mind to call the cops. He didn't break any laws. Well, it's a governor's order, ain't it? Yes, and with how you've been quoting the Constitution at me for the past year, I would think you knew the difference. Oh, and while we're on the subject of things you like to talk about, what happened to the coronavirus being a big scare? That was before it was shoved in my face, practically. Dad. I never said there wasn't a virus. Never said it weren't dangerous, neither. It just wasn't going to be dangerous to us. We were doing a real good job of keeping it out of this town, and that man dumped it right in our laps. You did say there wasn't a virus. What? You said it all last week. You kept saying it was just the flu. Why are you upset if it's just the flu? Why? Oh, I'll I'll tell you why. You know what that little sucker asked me to do? Who, Leo? He asked me, can you believe this one? After dragging the plague right to the doorstep, he asked me to go buy him groceries. What? Yeah. Said the house has been shut up all winter, didn't have no food. Well, whose fault is that? Oh, that poor man. Have you heard anything I've said? I'm going over and talk to him. Not, I forbid you, Lena. He's diseased and contagious, and he's going to make you sick, which will make me sick. We're supposed to help our neighbors, Dad, and he has no food. Well, he'd uh, have plenty of food if he'd stayed in Florida. Do you want anything from the store? Lena, I- I'm warning you. I'll get a jug of that sweet tea you like. Lena? Lena! Ah! <laughs> You were upset. Not that much. We believe you were very upset. You broke things. Always been a little clumsy. Did you intend to harm her? What? Your daughter. Did you intend to harm her in some way? How can you say that? Did you intend to hurt your daughter? No, of course not. What, What kind of fool question is that? We are trying to ascertain the situation. Well, don't do it with a lot of stupid questions. It is not a stupid question. You were violent, angry. You broke things in the kitchen because of what she did. Well, doesn't mean I wanted to hurt her. Good God, she's all I got left. We do not understand you. Well, I'm not surprised. You haven't listened to me for even two seconds. You seem very passionate about your beliefs, but they seem to change from moment to moment. Well, that ain't true. And there, when we assert something that is undeniably true, you deny it when it suits your purpose. Deny it with no explanation. I don't have to explain myself to anybody. If you're too stupid to see the truth, that's not my problem. We do not understand you. We have been ascertaining the situation for some time, but we don't understand you. You are a puzzle. Like I say, just gotta open your ears. No. What? No. We do not need to open our ears. We need to see what happened. We need to make use of the record and return to the key moment. What are you blabbing about? The key moment. The one decision you made that seems to inform all the others. The moment that makes the least sense. I don't know what you're talking about. But that shouldn't come as any surprise. The key moment. What key moment? The night you returned to your neighbor's home unbidden. The night it happened. Hello? Is anyone there? Hello, Leo. 
Roy? What are you doing here? Wanted to talk to you. You should have called, Roy. You can't be in here. I haven't sanitized the surfaces today. What are you doing tonight? Roy, you can't be here. You'll spread it. Is... is that a gun? Let's talk. You and me. Uh, what do you think you're doing? Sit down, Leo. There. Watching the news? Uh, yes. With the sound down? Uh, I don't need it. With all those words around this screen, you don't really need the, to listen. I hate all the words around the screen. It's confusing. Um, Roy... CNN, I see. There's a big shock. Don't suppose you ever turn on Fox. Roy, what are you doing? Answer my question. What? My question. Uh, what question? About Fox? Yeah. Answer it. Honestly. No, no, I don't watch Fox. Big surprise. Don't watch nothing you don't agree with. Why'd you do it, Leo? Why'd you come back? Uh, I don't know. You exposed me. You exposed my daughter. Uh, that's not true. We were never closer than ten feet from each other. Infecting the whole town. Selfish. Everyone. Everyone's always selfish thinking of themselves. Roy, why do you have a gun? It's my right. Second Amendment. Oh, that's why you own a gun. I'm asking you why you have it right now. Protection. From what? From selfish people. People what want to take what's mine. I don't want anything from you, Roy. Yeah, that's what they all say. You know, in the service we had guys like you. Guys who wouldn't think of no one but themselves. Uh, Roy, what are you doing here? They train you up to work as a team, but some guys, they never get that message. Just look out for themselves day after day. Roy, talk to me. In training, say guys like that will be the first to go, first to get knocked out in combat. That with a team, there is strength. Oh, but they're wrong. Roy, please. The selfish guys, they get through it. It's the ones looking to help everyone that end up dead. It's the ones what follow orders. They take point when you tell them to, even when they're scared spitless. Kind of a punk move on the commander's part, ain't it? Putting a kid on point doesn't know no better. Roy! He stepped on the first damn landmine he come to. What? Because I gotta protect her, that's why. I gotta protect everyone. I got to. Everyone's got their head in the sand but me. What are you talking about? I'm sorry, Leo. Roy? Roy! <laughs> are still encouraged to remain in their homes, but officials are optimistic that COVID-19 is now on the far side of the curve in our state. Hospitals are confident they can handle the load from here on. And though everyone is encouraged to be cautious, the end appears in sight for the pandemic of 2020. In other news, today... Oh, it's you. <coughs> Hello, Mr. Peterson. How you feeling? Oh, fine, detective. <coughs> Got the guy killed Leo yet? Well, that's what I'm here about. So, no, then. Well, it's been slow going. Pandemic slowing everything down. Didn't you hear the news? It's over. <coughs> well, it came to town late. <laughs> Two weeks, you haven't caught a burglar. Pretty damn slow, if you ask me. <coughs> Has it been two weeks? Gosh, it doesn't seem like that long. One thing, though. What? You, uh, you have an interesting habit. Whenever you refer to Leo's murder, you indicate a burglar did it. Well, who else? <coughs> well, that's the problem. There was nothing taken from his house. No sign of a disturbance. Well, probably just meth heads. They don't know what they're doing half the time. Uh, true enough, but thing is, when meth heads go through a house, they don't tidy up after themselves. Usually it looks like a tornado hit it. <coughs> huh. <coughs> Leaves me with a lot of questions about your neighbor's murder. Who would hate him that much? Can't think of who would. 
He was well-liked here, well-liked down where he wintered in Florida. I mean, the only thing he ever did wrong was travel after he'd been diagnosed with COVID. Yeah, pretty bad of him to do that. (coughs) Still, he isolated himself. He was the only case in town. Well, that we know of. (coughs) That's a dry cough, Mr. Peterson. (coughs) Yeah, allergies. You feeling feverish? I'm fine. (coughs) You know, the hospital got a shipment of tests in. State's got a pretty good system in place now. They're real concerned about flare-ups, so they want to test as many as possible. What are them gloves for? Oh, the gloves. They're for the handcuffs. Let's go get you tested. What? What are you talking about? I think you know. Let's get you tested, Roy. I think you might have been... exposed. (laughs) You have the right to remain silent. If you give up the right to remain silent, anything you say may be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney. You pled not guilty. Of course. Even though you did it, you murdered your neighbor? Can't prove it. They have the gun. They have the fact that you came down with the coronavirus when the only possible way you could have contracted it was from your neighbor. Hmm. You shrug at this. Well, what else can I do? They want to put together a bunch of lies, parade them around, that's their business. The gun. Ballistics match. Why, it was a plant. Wasn't my gun. It was your service weapon. Well, and then they took it to the range and fired it to get some shells that matched. Well, there's a million ways to set up a frame. But you actually did it. We know this. You know this. I don't have the foggiest idea what you think you know. I see. Our course is clear. Good. Can I go now, or are you going to do your magic trick with the doors again? No. Walk through that door. So long, dummy. What the hell? We're sorry, Roy. It's freezing. Yes. Your world is very hot to us. What? The temperature. I'm afraid you won't survive very long, but this will be an excellent opportunity for us. We must ascertain the situation. It's so damn cold, it ain't natural. It's it's spring. (gasps) Not here it isn't. Now relax. Do not harm our young. What? What is this? Just relax. There are bugs all over me. Caterpillars, actually. Harmless. Get them off. Get get them off. We need to study you more thoroughly. What's going on? Get off me. I I gotta go home. You can't be in your home, Roy. Your presence is very necessary for us here. We must ascertain the situation. And you are a vital part of that process. That's why we need you in quarantine. What? Quarantine, Roy. Here... In our home, you can remain as you are, safe from the influence of others. But I got a clean bill of health from the doc. (sighs) Oh, this is not about the virus. The virus is none of our concern. This quarantine is for your mind, and to give us a chance to understand that mind. At least until you freeze to death. I don't... You gotta let me go. No, Roy. We don't. I got... I got rights. Not here. I got... My family. What about my girl? We will keep an eye on her as we ascertain the situation. But I want to go home. No, Roy. We must understand your mind. 
We must understand it before we can move forward. You are important, Roy. The way you think, the way you act are things we must understand. (laughs) And we cannot take the risk of you being contaminated by others. You must remain here. You must remain in quarantine. (laughs) Oh, God. They're in my ears. Relax, Roy. It will all be over soon. You have been listening to Quarantine, part of the Icebox Radio Theater series Frozen Frights, Aurora Borealis. The cast in order of appearance featured Justin Kapla as the interviewer, Jeffrey Adams was Roy, Scott Sulak played Bob, Leo, and the detective, Billy Joe Cones played Lena and the TV anchor, and David Griffith played the soldier. Script, direction, and post-production by Jeffrey Adams. Some sound effects from the Freesound Project at freesound.org. The Dread by the wonderful Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com. Licensed under Creative Commons by Attribution 3.0. This program copyright 2020 by the Icebox Radio Theater, which is solely responsible for its content. Learn more at iceboxradio.org.